All right, so having some technical difficulties here, um, setting up the live to come on right after the video premiere. So uh, sorry about that and um, welcome to the live. What I'm basically gonna do is I'm going to offer this space for people to share some of their um, tips and um, hopefully um, I will also get the chance to read some of the stuff that people shared on the Facebook page. I do have some notes with me. Um, sorry for the technical difficulties, but it looks like Eve and Susan B um, and about four other people were able to figure it out. Uh, all things considered, considering the fact that I am in the Amazon basin right now, it's pretty amazing that this is actually able to work. And uh, during the time the Galapagos, I wasn't able to um, do any lives because the internet there was so slow. But what I'm gonna start off with here, um, welcome Chimera Bloom. Oh, I see there is a moth on your um, avatar. That's really cool. Jeannie is here also. Hi, Jeannie, great to uh, see you. Um, and Susan B and Ivea made it over from the How to Nature Journal in five steps. I used to think there was 10 steps I had a video, How to Nature Journal in 10 Steps, that was up for a long time, helped a lot of people get started with nature journaling. I put a lot of work into simplifying it to 10 steps. And this time while I was in the Galapagos, I decided to simplify it to five steps. And right now I'm gonna start reading some of these other people's um, ideas on what five steps are. So this is from the Nature Journal Club Facebook page. I know not everybody's on Facebook, or part of that group, but it is the biggest uh, international uh, nature journaling group in existence right now with about 40,000 people. And I posted this question six days ago. If you had to explain nature journaling to a beginner in five steps, what would they be? So you just saw the video where I shared what my five steps are, and now I'm gonna share some of these ideas from other people. So first from Lisa, Lisa said, one, be prepared, take your kit with you. Good, good idea. Go be in nature is number two. Three, observe stuff. Four, draw and record what you observe. And five, reflect and research while you rest at home. So I really like number five in hers, which is to do that sort of homework. I think that's cool she incorporated that. Not everybody does that type of nature journaling. Some people actually mostly do that at home, home study type of nature journaling. Um, either way is fine. So thanks Lisa for sharing those on um, the Facebook page. And I'm gonna read some more of these here. Oh, it looks like Jean also joined in. Um, good to see you, Jean. And um, for those of you who are in the live chat, go ahead and post um, some of your ideas on, on steps. I know some of you have posted what your five steps would be already, but anything that you wanna share or any kind of ideas that you have, let's make this into sort of a brainstorm session here and just get a few more ideas to, to help people who are getting started. Cause I know a lot of you that are watching aren't complete beginners. A lot of you are actually intermediate and advanced um, nature journalers. So next, the one that I see on the Nature Journal Club Facebook page is from Irmi. She says, um, one, you need something to write, draw with, and something to write, draw on. Two, find a comfortable spot with nature, whether outside or inside, wilderness or houseplant. I love that she mentioned a good inside alternative. Three, use all of your senses to observe your nature. Four, write, draw what you observe. Five, reflect in nature or at home. So those are really good um, tips from Ermi. Um, five steps for nature journaling. I like it. Okay, next is from Linda. Number one, be curious about your world. So very interesting starting with the, the word curiosity. Um, I like it. Familiarize yourself with the scientific method. So this is interesting that she brought up the scientific method um, for, for hers. Um, uh, familiarize yourself with the scientific method. Three, assemble your basic supplies. Four, immerse yourself in nature, and nature is everywhere. And five, be kind to yourself as you learn the process. So this number five is a good one that um, sometimes I don't think I mention it enough. Uh, maybe in some of my mindset videos, I talk about it, but that is a good one. Who else who's watching the live thinks that um, being kind um, to yourself as you learn the process is a good one? Um, let me know if, if anyone else thinks uh, that's a good one. 
Um, I like that Susan B mentioned um, that it's hard to boil down because it could be so different for everybody. That is a really good point. Um, I like to say sometimes when I'm a, being a smart aleck or when I'm telling the truth that the answer to all questions is it depends, especially in nature. Um, so thanks for sharing that. But that also doesn't really help people that can make things more complicated uh, for people who are just getting started. All right, so let's see. Um, ooh, Jeannie, this is a really good one. Very, very good point and very common mental block. Um, there are some ways to get around this that I've thought of, but I would love to hear, there's at least 12 people watching the live right now. Um, I would love to hear what some of those people think are solutions to this mental block that Jeannie is, um, Jeannie is mentioning. That is, thank you so much for bringing that one up. I am going to continue reading off of this list right here. This is from the Nature Journal Club Facebook page. I'm not promoting Facebook, but um, this is uh, the biggest online international community for nature journaling. Um, so, you know, be that what it what it what it may. It it is a can be a really great place to network or see what other people are doing. Um, it's not really it doesn't work for everybody, but it's good to know about it. So I'm going to continue reading off of that list of what people mentioned as their um, five steps. So uh, Linda Palermo is the one that brought up the um, scientific method. So that was um, very interesting. Next, I'm going to share Jose Jimenez and his um, post is in Spanish. So I'm going to go ahead and read it in Spanish. And um, if you can't understand, if you don't understand Spanish, then just uh, try to put attention to it like something in nature that you don't understand and see if you can uh, try to suss out any patterns because uh, English and Spanish are actually relatively closely related languages. And I'm probably going to be putting out more Spanish content in the future because I'm really busy um, teaching in Spanish, um, teaching nature journaling in Spanish. So Jose Jimenez, who is in Argentina and one is one of our major uh, nature journal teachers in the Spanish language, shared his five tips. And they are Primero, ser curioso es importante. Detente cuando la curiosidad se despierte. Dos, lleva siempre algo para anotar. Puede ser papel y lápiz o un teléfono celular. Tres, anota con tus palabras. Dibuja a tu manera. Cuatro, tu cuaderno naturalista crecerá con vos. Cinco, disfruta y comparte con otros. So for those who don't understand, understand Spanish, I'll translate Jose's um, great tips. His first one is one, being curious is important. So this is similar to, to another one. And uh, stop when your curiosity is aw uh, awoken, when your curiosity awakens. So that is a really cool um, comment from him. And this is sort of like a curiosity wander, which is a nature journaling strategy. And um, using that as sort of your um, decision-making tool, when your curiosity awakens, that's where you should stop in nature journaling. This can work for a lot of people and is a really great suggestion. If you have some other mental blocks though, they could potentially um, backfire if that is your only way of deciding when to stop and start drawing. Um, number two for him, lleva siempre algo para anotar. Always have something for taking down notes, whether it is paper and pencil or a cellular phone. Slightly controversial there, Jose. Um, you know, bring, using a cellular phone as your nature journaling tool could be slightly controversial. Let's save that for another discussion later. Maybe people in the comments can post what they think about uh, using a, a cellular phone um, as your nature journaling tool. However, this could be a really huge unlock because 90% uh, of adult human beings have a cellular phone within reach um, 24 hours a day. That is a statistic. I think it might even be more than 90% of the human adult population of planet earth has a cell phone within arm's reach 24 hours a day. And unfortunately we don't have those same statistics for a nature journal within arm's reach of every, um, not over 90% of adult humans. So, um, number, um, number three from Jose, Anota con tus palabras, dibuja a tu manera. So um, take notes with your words and draw 
in your own style, in your own way. So that's a really good, that's a small little tidbit there, but a really good point, a really good modifier on that, that, you know, everybody's going to have maybe a different way of drawing when they get started. Good point, Jose. And last, tu cuaderno naturalista crecerá con vos. Oh, actually, that's number four. So your nature journal will grow with you. And I think that's a really great point. And one of the beautiful things about how a journal is organized is that once this page is full, you go on to the next page and you keep going. And so there's a chronology and there's a growth built into it. Um, and number five, enjoy and share with others. So this is really cool that he mentioned the sharing with others tip. Who else in theirs, um, in their five tips mentioned something about interacting with other people? Because I think that is um, a very interesting point. And I know that I didn't mention that in my recent list of five. I think when I did my list of 10, how to nature journal in 10 steps, I did mention that one, but um, hadn't mentioned it uh, in this last one. So thank you, Jose, for all of those. This is the ones that I'm reading here from the Facebook page. So for those of you um, who are confused about what's going on, I'm reading some of these five nature journaling, how to nature journal in five steps tips that people shared on the Nature Journal Club Facebook page. Um, let me say hi to, let me check over here in the live chat, see who's there. It looks like 16 people are watching live. If you haven't commented something in the live chat, go on over there and say hi. Maybe at least let us know where you're tuning in from. I know Susan B, Jeannie, Chimera Bloom, Debbie, Ivea, and Jean are all here. Many of them are actually um, some of my Patreon members. So this would be a good time for me to mention that. And I also, by the way, um, need your help more than ever as I'm trying to spread nature journaling and make the world a better place through nature journaling. So if you believe like I do that nature journaling can make the world a better place, then copy this or just write down patreon.com slash Marley uh, spelling my last name is the hardest part. But by supporting me on Patreon, you're going to get access to a community of people who care and believe in the same things that a lot of the same things that you do. And you get access to some nature journaling tools and stuff like that behind the scenes content. But most importantly of all, you are um, showing that you believe that nature journaling can make the world a better place and joining a group of other people that believe the same and helping me with the work that I'm doing uh, making a lot of sacrifices right now to spread nature journaling to more people every day. It's what I think about how to make the world a better place through nature journaling. So check it out. It could be something that you might be interested in. And literally for $5 a month, which is, is hardly anything. Um, it's like a cappuccino. Basically you could be supporting, uh, the work that I'm doing and become a part of that community. So that's enough of that back to five steps for a nature journaling, how to nature journal, because I'm trying to get better at teaching these basic classes. So I know a lot of you aren't basic. A lot of you are intermediate and advanced. So I really appreciate you all being here. Oh, Karen is here from San Diego and Eli. Yay. This is, this is also a really great opportunity for me to connect with people that I, I've been missing doing lives um, while I was in Galapagos. All right. So um, continuing on with the list here, next person in line um, who shared five tips on how to nature journal is Gisela. Gisela says, um, I think she kind of, ooh, this is kind of a long one. So I'm not going to read this whole, that whole thing there. I don't know if those are actually in, in is really five steps, but she's sort of talking about supplies. Um, what are some of the supplies for getting started? Really cool. Um, but I will talk about supplies in another video, but thank you, Gisela. I will have to circle back and uh, talk about that later. Here we go. Another person, Sarah, Sarah, Sarah is in Sonoma County and sort of took over the North Bay Nature Journal Club. So I started a nature journal club, you know, when people were, uh, you know, a regional nature journaling club with outings and stuff. And I, um, managed it in the North Bay area for about four or five years. And Sarah took over and is doing a great job leading lots of outings um, and uh, is really knowledgeable about places in the North Bay area. So if you're north of San Francisco um, in Sonoma or Marin, check it out, the North Bay Nature Journal Club. And Sarah says, uh, nature journaling is in five steps. One, having a sense of wonder about what nature presents to you today in this moment and place. Two, 
using any paper and pen pencil to record date, time, weather, place, and something, anything you observe. This is really interesting. She's pointing out that you don't need to have special materials. You don't need to have the same uh, paper that Marley uses. You don't need to have a Fude Demonin pilot loaded up with um, special ink or anything like that. You don't need to have anything like that to Nature Journal. So thank you for pointing that out in one of your steps, um, Sarah. That's very empowering. And I think making um, you know five basic steps should be empowering. Um, next, uh, three, take a deep breath. Okay, so that's a good one. That's something that I sometimes forget to do when I start nature journaling. Four, observe some more, ask questions, make notes, get excited about the observations. And five, turn the page, do some more. I love that. Turning the page is such an important part of nature journaling. Um, let's see. Lots of people posting here in the comments. Love that. I hope the sound is okay. I know that my computer fan is on really strong because it's trying not to overheat. It's not that warm right now, but I am in um, the upper Amazon right on the equator. So it's been a little bit hard for my computer, I think. Um, okay, so thanks for Sarah for joining. Next, we've got like three more people that shared on the Facebook page. Um, Sabine says, let's see here, is this five steps? Grab paper and pencil, go outside, take time to actually look close to the nature surrounding you and try capturing what you see. Don't worry about perfectionism. Great. Really simplified it down. Um, Rebecca said to sit in nature, look, listen for a while, be still, then write and draw how you feel and what you notice. Wow. Even more simple. And then I think this might be the last person that shared on there. Um, this is kind of long. This is on the Nature Journal Club Facebook page. Um, several of the admins are in the audience. So uh, that's cool. Thanks for all the work that you do because it is a pretty big um, group. It is, like I said, the biggest um, place of uh, where all a whole bunch of international nature journalers get together. So I'm not promoting Facebook per se, but if you want to see what a really big group of nature journalers um, looks like, uh, then that is a place to go. It is. It can be a really good place to meet people. Like if you want to go travel to Australia and you want to find out who's nature journaling in Australia, or you want to find people in a town near you, go post on, on there. It's a good way to try to find that kind of stuff. So Caitlin said, I just did an independent study project on this to plan my nature journaling instruction for this year. This is what I do with my students. Really cool that Caitlin is going to be teaching nature journaling to her students. It's been weird for me. I keep hearing people talking about the school you're starting and stuff like that. And I feel very diso dissociated from the fact that it's fall in some places. I'm on the equator, so the seasons are, are different and everybody keeps saying it's the dry season, but it's been pouring rain almost every day. So, um, but Caitlin's about to start school and is going to use these five steps for teaching her students. Number one, the focus is on noticing and observing. What you put on the page doesn't matter as much as engaging with the nature around you. Great. Two, metadata. This gives any readers the context of your observations. Three, describe in words or sketch a landscape detail of your general surroundings to get comfortable with the space. Four, choosing one interesting thing to focus on. Make a quick sketch of it, maybe showing something zoomed in or zoomed out. Five, I notice, I wonder, it reminds me of, okay, and then uh, this sounds like the ones from my vi my video, How to Nature Journal in 10 Steps, so I'm honored that uh, um, some of those ideas, or maybe they weren't my ideas to begin with, but they're, you know, being continued on, they're living on, um, and then bonus content, she has six, words, pictures, numbers, can you use all three, seven, quick scribbles of color, using colored pencil to capture the colors of the feet. The scene. Think Claire Walker Leslie. Um, cool. Thank you, Caitlin. So those are all the people that shared there on the Nature Journal Club. Thanks for that. I'll close Facebook now so it stops tracking all of the other activity that I'm doing. Um, and now I'm just here with the, the live stream on YouTube. So let me check the comments here and send some love to all the people that I see 
posting in the comments. There's 19 people watching the video right now, which is awesome. Hopefully you all got to see the premiere of the How to Nature Journal in Five Steps, the new video. And I have some cool stuff coming out soon. I'm also working on a lot of shorts. So YouTube shorts are like these really short videos, 60 seconds or less. They're mainly for people who are watching um, YouTube on their phones. And I'm trying to make some sort of nature ones and some sort of entry level ones as I'm sort of like chumming the waters, trying to get more kind of people who don't know about nature journaling interested in nature journaling. So if you see those and, you know, you're watching other shorts about other things that are um, dumb and, and not really or maybe they're funny. Um, and addictive, but not really related to nature or nature journaling. And then check out some of my shorts. Maybe you maybe you'll like them too. Um, so gonna say hi and send some love to all the people. Whoa, accidentally zoomed in there. Um, Eli is here. Whoa, it rained in SF. That's awesome. Uh, hi, Eli. So glad you could uh, tune in. Um, good to see you on here. Ivea, as usual, representing um and gene is here thanks for joining in gene susan karen colson if you're in san diego karen colson is a nature journaler in southern california um Jeannie, thank you um for joining in susan b if you're curious about um eyeball hairs on invertebrates uh mainly insects i guess um ask susan b uh i love how your brain works susan b um and who else is here that I, I need to say hi to uh debbie is here debbie joined in when i did a live from the banks of uh one of the tributaries of the amazon the napo river uh, i did a live on sunday so debbie joined in while i was still live which was awesome thanks debbie i wasn't sure if that was going to work never done a live um from the side of the river before uh using my phone and cellular data and who else i think i said hi to everybody oh diana is also here um and chimera bloom thank you all so much for joining in it's been really great uh i miss doing these lives all the time i think i'm gonna be doing a lot next month next month i'm going to be renting a small studio apartment in quito in downtown quito it's the uh, second highest capital city in the world I think I've gone live from there before, produced some videos from there before. It's the capital city of Ecuador. I'm doing some collaborations, but I'm also going to be doing a lot of video work. I'm going to be teaching at Wild Wonder. So if you don't know about Wild Wonder, look it up. It's the Nature Journaling Conference. It's happening next month. I'm going to be talking about it like every day. So next month is going to be really exciting. Lots of lives. I'm probably going to be doing lives every single day during the Wild Wonder Nature Journaling Conference. But tomorrow I'm going back into the Amazon rainforest. I'm taking part in a science illustration class um, that I am really, really looking forward to. So I'm going to sort of be out of touch um, for a little bit there. And uh, I'll be back next week. I do have a short coming out this Sunday. So if you like watching Nature Journal show episodes on Sundays, there's going to be some scheduled um, to come out. And let me just show you a couple pages from my recent nature journal to uh, send you off with uh, something good. Um, and here you can see, oh, this is weird because I'm using a different camera. Here you can see an example of a drawing that I really didn't like the way it looked when it came out. So this was during a birding festival that just happened. And it was really cool place to teach nature journaling. And just to give you a little bit of um, background information on what I am up to and some of my plans, it seems like birding is really exploding in Ecuador. There's quite a few, there's a, a little bit under a thousand birders um, in the country for a small country that's pretty good. And it's, it seems to be growing quickly and there's a lot of young birders. That to me is an exciting piece of information that I learned about because they did a census and um, this the at this birding festival, I learned about that. It's exciting to me because in the nature journaling world, a lot of people got started with nature journaling, for, came from birding, were birders before they were nature journalers. So I did teach some nature journaling there, but on one of our on, on one of our birding outings uh, in the rainforest, this guy was using a mic to record. 
And I really wanted to draw that. And he was only in this position for a few seconds and I tried to draw him and drawing humans is really challenging. And it came out, I don't think it came out as a good likeness. He looks sort of like a pirate with a huge scar across his face, but um, he wasn't offended and I kept going with my page. So that's the important thing. And I have a record of that event on my page. I also tried to just keep track of all the birds. Everybody else was doing photography. So I had to sort of represent what nature journaling can do. You can see here, I used another strategy, which I try not to use too much, but this strategy is um, putting some stuff in, in the field and then leaving open spaces for things to add afterwards. So some people mentioned in their five, how to nature journal steps, um, doing work from home. So what I do sometimes in the field is I use a Tombow pin, a really pale Tombow pin, and I make these boxes where I'm gonna add more information. So for, for here, for example, we saw this really cool, but really hard to find, even though it makes a really loud noise, bird called a screaming peahop. So I drew a little bit and took some notes, but this is all I got is of its head movement. And then I'm gonna draw it more completely from a photo here. So this is one strategy I used. This, this little landscape Ito was done in the field. It was really humid. This was an amazing hawk eagle. Um, this is a type of jungle eagle um, that we saw. And I drew these in the field. And then I do have these other ones that are, I'm putting in from, um, from photos. So that's one strategy. You have to be really careful with this strategy because what you might end up doing is leaving all of these open spaces and never finishing them. Let me show you a couple more pages from um, the rainforest. Here you can see some of my notes. I use my nature journal for note taking or sketch noting when I'm at conferences. Oh, I'm also working on a potential logo for this Waurani community. The Waurani are an indigenous group in this part of the Amazon. Look them up if you don't know anything about them. It's pretty uh, it's pretty amazing to learn about their culture and their history. A fairly recently um, contacted tribe, um, like in the early 50s, they were basically uncontacted. Um, here you can see that um, when we visited their community, they um, painted our faces with achiote. And here I asked the woman if she could put a fingerprint of Achiote on my paper. So that was really cool in Waurani territory. Let me show you a couple more pages. A lot of times I do these complete journal shares just for Patreon patrons. Here's from the first day um, that I went out during the birding festival, saw this really, really cool woodpecker. I also was having issues with this page and a lot of the drawings weren't coming out great, um, partly because I was having some um, things, some of my nature journal supplies were failing because of the high humidity. So um, the jungle can be a challenging place. Technically, mostly where I've been is just tropical rainforest. I wouldn't call it um, jungle. There is a technical definition for what jungle means. Um, this was the first day. It actually started at 4 a.m. in the morning, I should point out. Um, with a fire by the river and 4 a.m. on the equator is completely dark. It doesn't really get light until maybe like 545 or something like that. And it started with a fire and a boiling pot to make guayusa, which is a caffeinated beverage drunk by a lot of the indigenous tribes in this area. Here is my hand holding a cup of guayusa and the notes in this is a watercolor I did in basically um, nighttime landscape. So trying to get better, um, trying to get better at uh, doing sketches at night. I'll show you uh, one more bird that was really special for me to see was the Huatzin. And it was a whole family of Huatzin and they actually have their own family taxonomically, which is really cool. But um, the uh, we also saw the mating, which was amazing. Um, but this is a, a drawing I did from a photo. You've probably heard of this bird before. When they're small, they actually have claws on their wings. Um, they're really primitive in some ways, and uh, they uh, have a lot of other cool things about them. So if you want to go down a bird rabbit hole, just look up Huatzin um, and see what you can read. Even just the Wikipedia is interesting enough. Um, ooh, lots of people joining in here. Um, 
I see that Lou is here. Thanks for joining in, Lou. That is awesome. Yes, the community here is pretty strong. So the uh, birding festivals are something they have on a regular basis and they do Christmas bird counts. I believe the, the record right now for Christmas bird counts with the most birds is from Ecuador. I think Ecuador has been winning that um, every single year for the for the last few years. The history of, of hobby birding in Ecuador is a really fascinating history that I knew nothing about before this event. So it was really, really cool to learn about that. Um, okay, thanks everybody. Um, yes, there's so many great comments here. Thank you all for sharing. Um, thanks, I see some people like my uh, hairstyle, thank you. And um, hopefully I'll have some more videos coming out for you really soon, including this Sunday, I have a short um, and some other stuff. So it's kind of late here late for me at least. Thank you so much for joining in and contributing to uh, nature journaling education and helping people who are getting started. So if you know anyone who hasn't taken the leap yet, but you think could be infected with the nature journaling virus, share the how to nature journal in five steps video with them. Or if you want to kind of um, get someone, you know, past a mental block in nature journaling, share the how to nature journal in five steps video the video that just premiered share that link with them and it could be a good place for people to get started i'll also be teaching nature journaling for beginners at the upcoming wild wonder conference all right everybody thank you so much for joining in and bearing with me with some of the technical difficulties bye